Hi, my name's Peter, and this is Go Verb and Noun. Okay, so a couple of weeks back, I got to sit down with Dr. Megan Gilbert, or as I call her, Meg. Meg holds a PhD in educational psychology and has a fair amount of teaching experience under her belt. She also has a vlog, and as it happens, she and I have been subscribed to each other for a few months now. When we found out that we both lived in Northern California, our first reaction was naturally, oh man, let's do a collab. So I headed over to her neck of the woods and we sat down and we chatted about education and technology and a bunch of different stuff. And it was awesome. After finding a nice little quiet business park, uh, she and I sat down and she told me about how things were back in the day in terms of using technology and education together. Now, just a word of warning, the audio may be a little wonky. Well, it is a little wonky because, well, it was windier than we were expecting. I did what I could to clean it up, but if you're having trouble understanding, I would suggest turning on the captioning, which I have provided just for you. All right, let's do this. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm Meg. And this is Lily. Hi, I'm Peter. And this is Lily. <laughs> and this is Peter. <laughs> and Meg. <laughs> let's talk about education. Yes. 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 So. Can we do one of those things where we, s we start with an anecdote? Yeah. So I taught psychology for two years mm -hmm. at St. Ed's. And one of the things, it was when, it was like 2006-ish. And it was when Wikipedia was still relatively new. One of the classes I taught was research methods. And it would include things like Pearson's correlation coefficient. And I would say, well, here's the gist. And if you want to know more, go to Wikipedia. But don't tell any of the other professors that I told you to go to Wikipedia because it had such a reputation for uh, being a source of ill repute. You know what I mean? So then, then they would all laugh and then, you know, we all were in mutual agreement that we would keep it a secret from the other faculty members that I was encouraging them to use Wikipedia. Right. Um, and I think that that points to something relevant in our current culture. Something like Wikipedia is I think a valid source for information, especially something that most people aren't going to go out of their way to like go in and mess with mm -hmm. and like write the word poop in the middle of the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient, like Wikipedia page or something. So they were, it was solid information. It had good references at the bottom mm -hmm. and nobody really messed with them. So yeah. you wouldn't get the gobbledygook and the junk and stuff. You know, maybe that's not even a thing anymore. I mean, circa 2006, it's, you know, almost 10 years ago. So. It's been a while since I've been in the education, like, thick of things. But I'm guessing there's probably still a reputation of, like, don't encourage your students to go to Wikipedia or the internet. Yes, I think you're right. Um, so, fun fact, I audited my friend Melody's class. She is a PhD candidate that is working on her PhD in linguistics. Mm -hmm. And she actually just got picked up for a Fulbright, Fulbright oh, scholarship. Oh, cool. Yeah. When I was auditing her class, she does this really cool thing where she assigns each student a language. Mm -hmm. And this is like an intro level linguistics course. And she gives each one a language and she says, let's make a Wikipedia page. What we're going to do is, like, first they go and they do all of the research. And then at the end, she takes all of the research that they put on or that they put into it. And then she shows them how to go and edit Wikipedia mm. pages. And so they end up using Wikipedia as a, as a learning tool, but also mm -hmm. as a research tool. Mm -hmm. uh, and in just about every college class that I've taken so far that requires some research, the, teacher, the teachers are always like, yeah, start at Wikipedia. Make sure you check the sources, but that's right. a great place to start like looking for information about whatever topic you want to cover. That's still just the general rule, like you can't use Wikipedia as a source. Right. But but they list their sources very neatly at the exactly, bottom. Yeah. And, yeah. and you don't really have a whole lot of vandalism on things that aren't hot button issues. Professors will say, don't use it as a source, but they will say also, use it to research. Mm -hmm. So I think that in the context of online education, I think it's a great tool. I yeah. love it. That's, that's where I start all of my research, almost. There, YouTube or wherever. Yeah. So. Yeah, because I mean, not even necessarily Wikipedia specifically, uh, it's, it's sort of a microcosm for source of information in the information age, right? Like yeah. it's just sort of a placeholder because it's just always the first result mm -hmm. and, you know. And I understand the argument for wanting to have reverence for peer-reviewed articles, mm -hmm. especially when teaching, let's say for example, maybe like a freshman level class where perhaps students have been sort of relying on whatever and this is sort of maybe their first exposure to peer-reviewed journals to sort of have that sort of 
keeping those, you know, sacrosanct and all that. But having seen how the sausage is made, so to speak, in that editing process, it's not that there aren't a lot of opinions in the mix. They're just well-informed, well-experienced opinions, but they may also sometimes be catty. So I'll give you an example, uh, and then we'll generalize to everything of course, from my of one course. example. Uh, is, you know, when I submitted to a journal, they sent back saying I hadn't cited Miller at all, and I mean, some name. And I'm like, well, wonder who that was. You know, like they wanted their own research publication citations, right. like included more uh -huh. in this thing that was gonna get, I don't know. I mean, maybe it wasn't them. Maybe they genuinely thought some third party wasn't <laughs> adequately represented in my lit review, the most least read section of my journal article. I don't know, but anyway, I mean, it just, it's part of why it wasn't an, an enjoyable experience. So I'm also bringing bias into my own uh -huh. story, well, right? Like, but I think that's ultimately an excellent point to make. Like people talk about how great peer-reviewed journals are, and they mm -hmm. are really great. They're a, a source of awesome. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they are made by human beings. And human beings themselves are generally, like, nobody's perfect. I think maybe the difference for a peer-reviewed journal versus Wikipedia is that people have the training to know how to make it sound better. Mm -hmm. um, they do come generally from a more academic background, mm -hmm. but it's still people behind right. the screen. Right, and I so I guess that's the that's the snag, is not letting yourself put all of your eggs into one basket with regard to something being like the end all be all, whether it be scientific research. I, I do see a lot of people doing that. And since my background's in research methodology, and it may not even be a study that I've looked at the methodology of, but just from hearing them sort of describing the results, I'm like, I think you might be generalizing findings from a study whose methodology I would not recommend generalizing those findings based on what I know about research methodology. Yeah. I mean, that's what my PhD is in, right? Uh -huh. I think, so going back to the whole Wikipedia thing, I thought yes. it was a good example of a new, like a novel idea of how we're using technology. Because mm -hmm. if you look at it, Wikipedia is one of the best examples of crowdsourcing mm -hmm. there is. Yeah. And the idea that we can use that not just to like come up with ideas to solve problems, but also to create solid ways to educate people. That's great. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you have... And consolidate information. Yeah. You know? And like having all of the people around the world that are all experts in so many different things, mm -hmm. if you have access to all of them, you might as well use it. Because mm -hmm. eventually, in theory, I think if you get something popular enough, like let's say cell biology, there are enough experts on cell biology out there that you know that in some form or another, Wikipedia has been peer reviewed. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it, it's interesting that people with that expertise have been willing to, you know, volunteer their time and you know contribute to that page, right? Yeah. yeah. As Wikipedia becomes more popular, there are people who become like that altruistic thinker mm -hmm. that are like, oh well, we want to commit a significant amount of our daytime. Yeah. Going through and checking these edits that have been flagged by others, or just doing QC. Like mm -hmm. quality control on whatever. Yeah. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Because then I do too. you get people engaged in the process of learning, and when they're engaged, when they feel like they contribute something, it's mm -hmm. my view, anyways, that they care more. And when yeah. they care more, you get more interaction. Well, and that's a learning process of its own because then they're like, oh, that's how that person conceptualized this. Mm -hmm. So then that's sort of a deeper, deeper learning level. So with regard to further implications for education, something that I think is very interesting is, so how I personally feel like I am skilled at culling information from say the internet, for example, and knowing what's poop and mm -hmm. what's valid. And like, I feel like I have a very evaluative skill set yeah. that has been finally honed through both education and work experience. And so how do we instill that into the mass? Like I yeah. want everyone to have one of their own mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I feel like the days of someone sitting at the front of the room who has all the information, I just feel like that's a really outdated model. And we're back. If I may direct your attention to this tree of knowledge right here, you'll find the other half of our collaboration on Meg's channel where we talk about the future of education. So go ahead, click it. Meg is super smart, and it was awesome being able to just sit down and talk with her about something that we're both really passionate about. But enough about us, 
Where do you see education going in the future? What would you say technology's role is in the learning process? Let me know in the comments below or hit me up on the social medium of your choice. Thanks for caring, and until next time, go verba noun. Go verba noun. <laughs> this sounds so bad. Am I going to stick with it? I think I'm going to stay with it. Yeah, I think I will.